For more than 600 years, Islam thrived in Al-Andalus, or Spain as it is called today. But then it was driven out by force. It looked as if the light of Islam had faded from here. But of course not forever. By the grace of Allah, Islam has made its way back here. Join us as we retrace the steps of Islam here in Spain. In the year 711, a Muslim army under the command of Tariq ibn Ziyad came all the way from northern Africa here to Gibraltar. They were summoned by a Christian leader who wanted their assistance against their cruel king, Roderick. It is said that after landing, Tariq ordered for all of the vessels to be burned in order to boost the morale of his troops against an enemy far superior in numbers. After their only way to leave was gone, they only had one way left. Their only way was forward. Against all odds, the Muslims achieved victory after victory and established their rule in a great part of what is today known as Spain. These events ushered in an era of Islamic rule and prosperity. Arts and culture flourished. The universities and libraries attracted students from near and far. Many religions lived peacefully under Islamic rule and under their protection. And more and more people were introduced to the beautiful teachings of the Islamic faith and joined Islam. For more than 700 years, the Azan, the call to prayer, was heard in Al-Andalus. It became a place of worship of Allah the Almighty. Prayers and the recitation of the Holy Quran filled days and nights. Beautiful architecture such as the Great Mosque here in Cordoba still stand testament to Muslim presence here in Spain. But over time, the mosque fell into Catholic hands and it was converted into a Catholic cathedral. This church steeple used to be the minaret of the mosque. The reason for the painful loss of the mosque is simple. As Muslims forgot the teachings of their faith and focused on worldly pomp and riches, they neglected what had made them successful in the first place. When Christian leaders launched the Reconquista, Muslims, weakened by quarrels amongst themselves, were no match. They suffered harsh losses. For forced to convert to Christianity, their children were taken away from them and they were expelled from their homes. These ruins are silent witnesses of the painful history of Muslims. This simple farming village is located in the east of Spain. The lands here were infertile before Muslims fled here. This is where the last Muslims sought refuge. But in the end, even they were expelled from Spain. But this is not how the story ends. एक जरी उल्ला ने लहराया अलम इस्लाम When in 1889 the renaissance of Islam began in the village of Gadian, India, nobody would have thought that soon its shining rays would reach from here all the way to Spain. But Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad al-Islam revealed to the world that he indeed is the promised Messiah and Mahdi. And in a revelation, he received a promise by Allah Almighty. I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. After the promised Messiah, salam, his khulafa, appointed by Allah, have continued to spread the peaceful message of Islam. And in 1963, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad anhu, the second Khalifa of the promised Messiah, salam, sent Malik Muhammad Sharid Gujarati Saab to Spain. Soon after he arrived here in Madrid, he started to win the hearts of Spanish people. But just months after his arrival, he was forced to leave Spain again as anarchy and turmoil broke out in the country. But the second Khalifa anhu, was determined to restore Islam in Spain. In 1946, he passionately vowed that if enabled by God, he would send missionaries to Spain in order to spread the message of Islam Ahmadiyyad and reconquer Spain for Islam peacefully by winning over the hearts of people. 
and in this way peacefully avenged the humiliating defeat, forced conversions and eviction of Muslims from Spain. And so, His Holiness Hazrat Khalifa al Masisani sent Molana Karamila Hizafir Saab and Molvi Ishaq Saki Saab here to Spain in 1946. They arrived here on June 10th and people in Spain were drawn to the beautiful light of Islam again. But as Spain was ruled by the dictator General Franco, it was forbidden to preach any other religion than Roman Catholicism. And soon, even more obstacles seemed to appear. Because of the partition of India in 1947, the Jamaat faced financial hardships and it looked like the mission in Spain had to be closed. The missionaries were directed to return to Pakistan. But... Maulana Karamilai Zafar Saab was determined to fulfill the task given to him by the second Khalifa Razilat al Anhu. So he wrote a letter to Azur asking for permission to stay in Spain as a self-financed missionary. His Holiness Razilat al Anhu granted the request of Maulana Karamilai Zafar Saab. And by the grace of Allah, this emissary of Islam was not only able to find a way to provide for his family and himself, he was also able to earn whatever was needed for his work as a missionary. He achieved this by selling self-made perfume on markets in Madrid such as this. Soon he became well known in the city. People called him the man with the turban. And with the perfume he sold, he offered his customers a scent that would never cease to give its fragrance. The scent of Islam. But it was a very difficult and dangerous time for the missionary. Molana Karamilai Zafar Saab was not allowed to preach Islam, so he was arrested several times and his stall was vandalized by Catholic extremists. But through all the hardships, this peaceful messenger of Allah endured. Molana Karamilai Zafar Saab set an example of trust in God. You could fill hours just speaking about all of the blessings he witnessed while staying firm in his mission, bowing to his Lord and Creator and following the instructions of our beloved Khulafa. He was even bold enough to write to General Franco himself, the very man that imposed Catholicism as the sole state religion. Just think about how great his trust in Allah must have been. The outcome could have been far worse than just being arrested. But look what happened. Although Franco didn't accept Islam, he wrote back to Molana Saab thanking him for his letter. And Allah rewarded this trust even more. After nearly 25 years of facing this persecution, in the late 60s and early 70s, the government finally gave the people of Spain some degree of religious freedom. The Jamaat was officially registered as a religious community and in 1970, Spain was blessed by a historic journey. For the first time, a Khalifa of the Promised Messiah visited the country, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih III. His Holiness explained the significance of this journey to Spain by saying to his entourage, I can hear the hooves of Tariq's trotting horses in Spain. His Holiness Hazrat Khalifa al Masih III Rahmatullah, also felt great affection for the Spanish people. On one particular night during Hazur's visit to Grenada in Spain in 1970, Hazur especially worried how Islam may spread in Spain as the Jamaat has no resources. So this man of God spent the entire night praying passionately to Allah Almighty. And Allah the Most Gracious answered the prayers of his loved one. At daybreak, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih III Ramulatala, received a revelation which is also a verse of the Holy Quran. And finally, the time for a new mosque in Spain had come. His Holiness tasked Karamila Hizafar Saab with finding a suitable plot for a mosque. After a long search, the location for the first purpose-built mosque in Spain in 700 years was finally found, here in Pedro Abad, near Córdoba. And 10 years after receiving the revelation by Allah, His Holiness traveled to Spain again. 
this time to lay the foundation stone of the Basharit Mosque. What at one time seemed impossible now became reality. A glorious proof that Allah is with his messengers. मुझे तबीर मेरे जेन में ये डाली गई कि स्पेन में हम मुस्ताकम हो जाएंगे मस्जिद हमें मिल जाएगी लेकिन अभी नहीं वक्त आने पर और नौ दस साल के बाद खुदा ताला ने ऐसे हालात बदले कि वहाँ मस्जिद के लिए ज़मीन मिल गई वहाँ मैंने बुनियाद रखी अब ताज़ा इतला के मुताबिक वो मस्जिद बन चुकी है During this trip to Spain, Hazur also coined the motto that is now internationally known as a slogan of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, love for all, hatred for none. When the mosque was completed in 1982, the fourth Khalifa Ramullah Tala blessed the inauguration with his presence. Members of the Jamaat and a large number of local people had gathered to witness the historic event. It was an emotional evening. तमाम दुनिया के अहमदियों के लिए और खसूस उनके लिए जो आज इस मुबारक तकरीब में शामिल हैं बेानतहा खुशियों का दिन है और दिल अल्लाह ताला की हम से भरे हुए हैं लेकिन ये खुशियाँ आम दुनिया की खुशियों से किस कदर मुख्तलफ हैं इन खुशियों का इजहार भी एक बिल्कुल अनोखा और अजनबी इजहार है ये खुशियाँ एक मुकदस गम बन कर हमारे दिल दिमाग पर छा गई हैं मुझे एक याद सता रही है उस वजूद की याद जो आज हम में नहीं जो सबसे ज़्यादा इस बात का हकदार था कि आज ये जुमा पढ़ाता और आज इस तकरीब का आगाज करता उसकी वो बेकरार दुआएँ जिनकी कबूलियत का फल हम आज खाने लगे हैं वही दुआएं हैं जिन्होंने स्पेन की तकदीर की काया पलटी जिन्होंने अहल स्पेन को भी आज़ादी नसीब की और उसी आज़ादी की बदौलत अल्लाह ताला ने हमें इस मस्जिद की तमीर की तोफ़ी बख्शी लेकिन जैसा कि मैंने कहा था ये भी एक खुशी का वक्त है आपकी याद भी एक खुशी की याद है और वो और हम यकीन रखते हैं और अपने रब से रब के हजूर इतजा करते हैं कि आज आपकी रूह सबसे ज्यादा इस नजारों से लजत याद हो रही हो And so, by the grace of Allah and the guidance of the Khulafa of the Promised Messiah, a new era for Islam had dawned upon Spain. By the grace of Allah, Pedro Abad has been blessed by the presence of three Khulafa of the Promised Messiah. Through their guidance, every day is a new opportunity for progress. And as His Holiness Hazrat Khalifa al the fifth May Allah be his helper, has made clear during his first blessed visit to Spain in 2005, it is also a great responsibility. Today, you who are in Spain, you have the opportunity to come here. Your job is to bring this broken miracle back again. حضرت محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے قدموں تلے لے آئیں پہلے آنے والوں کے ساتھ یہ وعدہ نہیں تھا کہ ان کی عظمت ہمیشہ قائم رہے گی بلکہ دین سے دور چلے جانے کی خبر تھی لیکن مسیح محمدی کی جماعت کے لیے تا قیامت قائم رہنے بڑھنے پھولنے اور پھلنے کی خبر ہے اور یقیناً اس جماعت نے دنیا پر غالب آنا ہے انشاءاللہ تعالیٰ لیکن لوہے کی تلوار چلا کر نہیں بندوقوں اور توپ کے گولے چلا کر نہیں بلکہ پیار اور محبت کے تیر چلا کر اپنے اندر پاک تبدیلیاں پیدا کر کے اپنی عبادتوں کے مایار بلند کر کے اپنی راتوں کو اس کے حضور جھکتے ہوئے گڑ گڑاتے ہوئے دعائیں کرتے ہوئے گزار کر ہر انسان کا حق ادا کرتے ہوئے چاہے وہ احمدی ہے چاہے وہ مسلمان ہے چاہے وہ عیسائی ہے یا کسی مذہب کا ہے 
The grace of Allah, His Holiness Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V, may Allah be his helper, visited Spain again in 2010. During this visit, His Holiness laid the foundation stone of the Beto Rahman Mosque here in La Pobla de Valbona, near the city of Valencia. A blessed and historic occasion for the country of Spain. His Holiness later explained that he chose this location for the mosque because at the time of persecution, Muslims in Valencia continued to speak Arabic and to openly practice their faith, while other Muslims in Spain didn't. In 2013, during his third visit, Hazur inaugurated the Beto Rahman Mosque and in the following Friday sermon, reminded the Ahmadis in Spain of the importance of sacrifice. This sacrifice nowadays does not include a jihad of the sword, but rather a jihad of peaceful tablir and financial contribution. During his Friday sermon, Hazur also offered a powerful prayer. इसको उन मकासद के हसूल का जरिया बना जो तेरे घर बनाने के मकासद हैं तू अलीम है तू हमारी कमजोरियों और नाहलियों को भी जानता है बस हमारी दुआएं सुनते हुए हमारी नाहलियों से सरफे नजर करते हुए हमें मस्जिद की तामीर के मकासद को पूरा करने वाला बना and what about the village where Muslims started over after they had to flee from forced conversions and persecution during the Spanish Inquisition? This place in an infertile land where they settled after they were forced to abandon their homes. And from where, in the end, they still were expelled. Well, in 2013, these ruins finally found solace when they were visited by His Holiness, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V, may Allah be his helper. And in this very village, where 400 years ago Muslims used to call for prayer, Hazur instructed some members of his kafla to give the azan, the call to prayer. <laughs> Shahadu Allah ilaha illallah. Hazur also instructed Munir Odisab, the head of MTA Productions and a Palestinian by origin, to give azan. <laughs> Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala salat Hayya ala salat Finally, 
After hundreds of years of longing, the sound of the call to Allah resounded in the village again. And through the instructions of Khilafat Ahmadiyya, the call to Allah is on its way to resound in all of Spain, through leaflets, missionaries, mosques, and the Khalifa ever.